All righty, guys. Well, hey, welcome again for another Sunday blast off called FFL Primetime. I am super pumped up today. We've got one of the fastest growing VP manager, board member, whatever you want to call her. I just call her Superstar Nina. So, guys, I'm excited to listen and see what she's got to implement and teach us because when I first got here, one of the people I always gravitated towards was Nina. She has high energy, ton of knowledge. And she just works her butt off. And I, I really, really have a lot of respect for people that just get out there and grind. But guys, tune in. Please take your notes. And Nina, let's kind of just backtrack a little bit. For those that don't know you, for those that do, let's kind of talk about, you know, the intro part to this. And then we're going to start getting into some nitty gritty fun stuff. Absolutely. Well, Jesse, thank you so much for having me on. I've always been inspired by you. And honestly, if you guys are on FFL primetime, you guys are seriously on one of the best teams, in all of FFL, because Jesse is continuously leading from the front every single day. And honestly, everyone sees it. So thank you again for having me on. Um, back in two th August of 2019, I started uh, with Family First Life. Prior to FFL, I was a uh, captive agent in the life insurance space. I had actually heard about FFL like two or a year and a half before I actually started. And I was going to make the transition then, but it was one of those things where I was like Googling stuff and I was like, whoa, this seems like way, way, way too good to be true. So I decided to stay with my 30% comp <laughs> and uh, bait and switch leads. So I stayed there for literally like another year and a half. And there were so many people from that last company coming over to FFL. And I was like, okay, like, obviously these people are crushing it. Like Jordan Lowry literally sent me, like, he just kept pestering me. Like he was one of those people that wouldn't leave me alone. Like every single day he said, he'd send me a screenshot of his deposits. I'm like, dude, like I get it. You're killing it, but leave me alone. Um, but it got to the point where I was just like, so fed up of the bait and switch of, you know, building an agency and an agent writing a policy and then leaving the next day. And it was like constant, like rotating door. And I didn't want to be there anymore. So right. I did a start FFL. So August of 2019, I started like very, very part-time. So like, you know, I said I was full-time, but I was really part-time. It's like one of those people that come in and they buy some leads and then they write some business and then they made the most money that they ever have in their life. <laughs> so then they go to Disneyland for like two weeks. That was literally me. I went to Hawaii for two weeks after my first week. And, um, basically was just like, you know, not, not really all in. Right. And I went to this uh, conference in November of 2019. And that was like the moment, like, I just like, remember it, like it was yesterday. I was sitting there and just listening to people like, you know, Andrew Taylor, Jonathan Porcina, Mark Mead, like all these people on stage. And they're just talking about how life-changing and like the different things they do to have success with FFL. And a lot of the things that they kept saying was like getting repetitive, you know, it was like, Hey, spend this much on leads a week, 1500 to 2000. Hey, if you run 30 to 40 appointments a week, like you're going to have success. There's no way to fail. So I came off of that event and I'm like, okay, like it's time to go all in because why would I not take full advantage of this opportunity? So, I mean, it's been amazing ever since I decided to go all in. I love it. Love it. Sorry. I was just stepping away here. I want, like, you're about to drop some fire here. So I need to make sure I have my notebook. So, cause I, I always tell everybody, I'm like money makers are note takers. So I love the fact that you've made the decision consciously to go all in because I mean, I, I look back at from even when I first got here to see where you're at today. And it feels like it was a rocket ship. I, I can't imagine what it's going to, what it feels like to be in your shoes. You know, I remember I, I saw the, the agency numbers and then it just went like, <laughs> just like rocket launched. And, you know, <clears throat> I always, I'm a big firm believer that you become a version of the people you surround yourself with. So this is where I'm like, I need to get around Nina. I need to stay around Josh and Alondra. I need to stay around the crazy people and company that are making moves. And, you know, the good thing is, is I feel like we've all been able to attract the same type of people. Yes. And that's the people that are going all in. Now, outside from that, you know, I do want to attach into this because I was actually thinking a whole nother direction, but the fact that you're on a travel trip and I feel that's potentially a struggle that a lot of people have. M myself personally, I've tend to struggle a ton on travel trips where I feel like I run into a lot of adversity and I, I'm, I want to navigate that. So maybe some helpful tips to those that are wanting to take travel trips, they're uncomfortable, how should they do it? What does it look like? What's your, your run day look like? Are you dialing before? 
maybe we can tap into kind of the scheduling and we can kind of have like a, a multi-layer of awesome Nina power here today. So absolutely. Well, first and foremost, I love travel trips. So like my first year, so like that event that I was talking about in November of 2019, that's when I committed to going all in. And that's when I committed to hitting hall of fame. I was like, there's like non-negotiable, like I am hitting hall of fame in 2020. Yeah, it was 2020. And so if there, if it wasn't for travel trips, I don't think I would have hit Hall of Fame. They literally changed the game for me. And it's because like, I live in Arizona, there's leads. I could definitely make it happen over there. I'm going to have to work a thousand times harder though. So um, that's, I literally started implementing travel trips right then and there. So the cool thing about FFL is that you're like where I come from, the captive company, like I was only allowed to work three states, which really sucked. Cause like, you can only go so far where with FFL, like we literally, can run absolutely everywhere and whether it's virtual or whether it's in person like that's the coolest thing is like you could literally pick up leads anywhere so like for me um at living in arizona i was like okay like hawaii seems really cool and florida seems really cool so i'm just gonna like those are gonna be my two areas on top of my home state that i'm just gonna run all the time and the key is like you don't want to like spread yourself too thin you don't want to say like oh this week i'm going to vegas next week i'm going to ohio the week after that i'm going to um, maryland like you don't want to spread yourself so thin because like ultimately like when you do go on a travel trip you're not going to be able to work all your leads so like that's why it's so important to come back to the same places so essentially um i guess i'll i'll tell you guys the structure of this travel trip so um so hayden and i are both here we got here on thursday we actually dialed on uh wednesday and thursday for Friday and Saturday. So like we both dialed, we both hammered the phones and typically like you wouldn't run with someone you would run on your own, right? So um, you get on the phones, I would say one to two days before you go. And like the key with a travel trip is you're already going out there, you're already spending the money, you're already getting the rental car, you're already getting the hotel, why not just buy as many leads as you possibly can? Don't cheap out or skimp out on leads at all if you're, if you're actually going out there and doing it. So like when we come out here, it's like, yeah, typically we're spending like $1,500 to $2,000 a week in leads. Well, this travel trip, we probably spent four grand in leads because like we know the numbers that we want to put up. So um, basically we, we bought a ton of leads. Um, we basically just chase the leads in the CRM. So if there's a lot of instance, a lot of one through three month final expense, a lot of one through three month old mortgage protection, um, the, we love the one month old internet leads. We're basically just chasing the leads. If we see that an area has a ton of leads, we're going there. So we grabbed a bunch. We dialed on Wednesday and Thursday, literally all day up until our flight. And when we dial for these travel trips, we don't dial to book eight appointments on the day. Like literally yesterday we had 12 appointments. The day before that we had 14 appointments just because we know we're already out here. We're literally booking them every 45 minutes to an hour, like right on top of each other. Just because we know like, Hey, there's going to be no shows. There's going to be reschedules, but we're already out there. Why not make the most of it? So I'm big on like booking appointments before I even get there. And when you are saying 12 to 14, because you guys are running both each of you have 12 to 14 appointments, not just one. Correct. That's insane. Yeah. That's absolutely insane. So when you are running, what, what's your start? And obviously you, you finish when you finish. Yeah, you finish. But like, I like to book my ends first when I am dialing. So it's like, Hey, I'm booking an 8am appointment first. And then my last one's going to be booked at 9pm. And then like, if I'm literally the whole entire schedule's booked and I'm like, Hey, I still need to book, you know, one, two more appointments. I'm booking 7am and 10pm if I have to. So it's like, again, you're already out there. Your sole purpose, like the psychology of a travel trip, I guess it's like, you're going out there to work. Like we don't, people are always like, Oh my gosh, you guys are in Hawaii. Like you guys get to go to the beach. You guys get to do all this. No, we literally get in we meal prep like so we were not stopping at all these cool like restaurants between our appointments we meal prep our food we're literally in the car all day if we get no show we're doing door knocks we're dialing from the car like we're making sure that we're getting every bit we're squeezing literally everything we can out of the travel trip and we always say like okay if we um, protect this many families then we get to take one day to go to the beach or extend our trip or whatever we want to do but if we don't like we're literally leaving like mission not accomplished we got to get out of here right so right. um <clears throat> yeah like when you're on a travel trip that's all you're doing it's less distractions like if you get a no-show don't go back to your hotel like literally take that time to door knock 
And then another thing is like picking like two to three main areas that you go to is like the next time you come back, the people that no showed you rescheduled, how to think about it, whatever, like you can always go back to those leads. So it's not like you're just letting them go to waste. I love it. Nuggets on nuggets right here. So, and you know, if you were a brand new agent, so we've got the structure of what we've got to look like. Yeah. Hey, Sue said your schedule is literally no joke. Um, Will did ask here, what are the pros and cons compared to running virtual to your travel trips? You know what? I think virtual is freaking awesome. And I think like what, virtual has changed the game for, for FFL just because like, I mean, Josh Williams says it perfectly. He said like, Hey, I can only take so many agents in the field with me. Like literally we used to train people in the field, hands on. Like I hire a new yeah. agent and I'm bringing you in the field with me. I can't bring four to five people in the field with me at the same time. Right. Cause that'd be weird. Someone would probably kick us out, <laughs> but like virtual, like it's first off, like you do you guys see like those now hiring signs everywhere now like literally like everywhere's short staff restaurants bars like wherever you go it's short staffed why is that because literally everyone is got used to obviously unemployment and everyone got used to working from home right so like now everyone wants to work from home so i feel like it, you're going to attract more people to this business by saying, yeah, like you do get to work from home. Although some people like, I always tell agents that come in like, Hey, which do you prefer? Would you like to sell in person? Or would you like to sell over the phone? And if someone that's already killing it in person doesn't want to go virtual, like by no means, like they do not have to, if they're already crushing it. But I think it's a cool way to duplicate very easily because again, like Jesse, like you do this all the time. You're on Zoom all day and people are literally listening to you sell and you're a top freaking producer. So who wouldn't listen to you? It's so easy to duplicate that way. So, um, you know, I don't think there's any cons to either. I think both are great. It's just a preference really. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel too. And one thing I always recommend to my newer agents, and this, this might be something you do as well, find that preference. But at the same point too, while you're waiting for contracting, plug into dials. So, cause if it's, you got your boot camp done, your license, you're waiting to get the license, you're waiting to get your contracts. There's like potentially three to five days that could be there. Are you going to sit there and eat bonbons and watch Netflix? Or are you going to sit here and watch top producers help and serve families? You know, and the, it's really interesting. I've noticed the trend, the top producers on my agency or other people that are coming into the system, they see me on Instagram. They're like, Hey dude, can I at least just plug in? Absolutely. And it's so awesome to watch. You probably see this happen with your, your gals and your guys where they come in and like first day they book like 10, 15 appointments and then they're closing maybe three or four families over the phone. And you're like, dude, like, are you a prodigy? Like, where did you come from? Like, hold on, let me check your temperature through zoom. Are you good? Yeah. You know? And so I, I love that now. Okay. So I do have some, some notes here from when we had talked the other day. Um, and one of the things that I'm very much so interested in doing because, you know, I, I, it's hard not to, to miss what you're doing, which is odd. Like I just noticed this on Instagram the other day that somehow I was not following your account, but I always see your stuff. So I was super confused, but I always see you. So I think there was a glitch on Instagram, but, um, I'm noticing you constantly post like you and Hayden specifically, you're like nonstop. And I think it's great to have the variety, like where do you get the cleverness with your posting and how are you pitching your angle? Cause I've always felt it was, you can get a little aggressive like towards like laughing, laughing stock towards people that aren't as fortunate to be working with FFL. Um, and, and honestly, it, it, it is kind of a laughing stock like where our pride and our ego and the calculator just don't seem to click and make sense, you know? But yeah. what's, where do you kind of come up with your ideas Mm -hmm. for your marketing and then how are you doing your marketing to attract either agencies and already licensed agents or just people in general absolutely so you guys like social i would say 99 percent of ffl limitless comes off some form of social media so like Social media is literally the way to recruit and build a big business with FFL. And the best part about it is that it's free. It's just, it just takes a lot of work, just like anything. Right. And one thing like, and I, I do want to mention this, like one thing when I started, people always ask me like, 
hey, how do you sell and how do you recruit and how do you do all this, this and this at the same time? And I'm like, dude, it's supposed to be hard. Like it's not supposed to be rainbows and butterflies and every day is like, yay, like I'm so excited to make these 25 posts on Instagram today after just running 12 appointments. Like it's exhausting, but it's supposed to be hard. And that's why you'll build a big business, right? So um, basically my, our main, I would say platform is gonna be Instagram. We also use Facebook. We use a lot of LinkedIn, but Instagram is my favorite. So it's consistency is going to be the main thing. So like when I first started in this business and I was buying like $400 worth of leads and having like minimal results, the same thing with Instagram. It's like when I was posting two posts a day and I wasn't getting any messages, like I can't really like complain, right? Because I'm actually not putting in the work. So um, two ways to really recruit people using Instagram. So there's attraction marketing and then there's like, cold, like basically reaching out to people. So um, attraction marketing is exactly what Jesse was talking about. Like, how do you attract people to this business? What do you post to attract people? And it's very simple because it's a copy and paste business. Like I literally just copy and paste what every single other person is doing. I copy stuff that Joshua Melandra posts. I copy stuff that Jesse posts. I copy a copy stuff that uh, Sheila Day posts. Like literally there's ideas everywhere. And um, it's things like, it's just staying consistent with it. So like, again, I started posting two, three times a day. And it worked a little bit, a little bit, but it didn't work enough. So I was like, okay, like, I really don't care if I get unfollowed because the right people are going to join this business and the right people's lives are going to change. And if someone wants to block me for posting and wanting to literally help someone better their life, then by all means block me. I really don't care because there's plenty of other people. Right. So, um, 25 times a day on my Instagram stories itself is like non-negotiable. I write it. I have my little, uh, notebook every single morning. And my goal in there every single day is 25 posts on my stories. And I like to keep it like, so I have two Instagram pages. I have the FFL limitless page. And then I have my personal page on the FFL limitless page. It's going to be a lot of leaderboards, um, first sales, stuff like that. It's called, it's for the purpose of that page is for reshareable content. So like Jesse, if you repost something that FFL Limitless posts, now Jesse's followers are seeing what FFL Limitless is posting. Now they're attracted to FFL Limitless, if that makes sense. Where the stuff on mine, like I'm still posting a lot of personal stuff on mine. It's not like all FFL, it's not all leaderboards. Like you wanna make sure you have that, you know, that balance between the two. Cause again, like if it's just like leaderboards that I'm posting, they're gonna be like, okay, like, is this a business page? Like, is this a person? Who is she? Like, what is she doing? Right. So like, I have a couple of things that I do every single day. The first thing I post every day, I'm an early bird. I wake up before 5 a.m. Every single morning when I wake up, I'm posting like a quote of the day and I'm time stamping literally 5 a.m. I want people to wake up, see that and be like, dang, she wakes up early. She must work really, really hard, right? That attracts people, hard workers. Um, the second thing I'm posting is going to the gym. So like every single morning, non-negotiable. And these count as my two posts. Like I just want to get in front of people. The more you post, the more you're like the first person on someone's Instagram profile. Like Sean, right now, if I post something on my story and you go to your Instagram, I'm probably going to be one of the first people that pops up on your story highlight thing because I post so much and I'm loud about it. I'm obnoxious about it and I don't care, right? So um, I post the gym. And then that's when the FFL stuff starts rolling. So I'm posting things like, um, like Paul McLean does like a lot of the reels. I'll repost a reel of his, that counts as a post. Um, Sean just protected one family and, you know, took a picture with them, let's just say, or did it over Zoom. I'm reposting that. Um, Sheila Day went from working at Avon to, you know, life insurance. I'm posting that. There's so many different things. Um, leaderboards, first sales. I'm, po I'm just reposting a lot of stuff like um, Josh and Alondra. They post stuff all the time. Guess what I do? I literally screenshot and repost it. So there's so much out there. The consistency is everything. So that's attraction marketing. So like you're literally posting enough for people to see you enough to be attracted to what you're doing. But at the same time, I don't just sit there like my job isn't just to sit there and post all day. It's like if I'm not reaching out to people like closed mouths do not get fed in this business. That's period. Like I'm not just going to sit there, and make you Instagram posts and like expect to get 200 agents. Right. So like you have to actively go out there and reach out to people as well. So um, how do you find these people? So like a lot of people will say like, hey, 
I'm posting, but I'm not getting any results. And I'm like, okay, you're posting. Like, who are you posting to? They're like my followers. I'm like, dude, your followers see you every day. Are you not following new people? Like, it's just like your people that have your sister, your cousin, like they're, if they're not here yet, like they're not interested time to find new people. So, um, the way you do that is by hashtags, looking up accounts and places, locations on Instagram. So those are like the three ways that I find people. So you guys, there's thousands of insurance companies out there. There's over a million licensed life and health insurance agents out there. And guess what? Like 85% of them probably use social media because a, they're looking for clientele or they're looking for agents to hire or to recruit into the business. So basically what I do, let's say family first life. I'm not going to use any other company names, but let's just say family first life. If I'm looking to bring, if I'm with another company, I'm looking to bring someone on from family first life. I'm going to go to accounts first and I'm going to look up family first life on Instagram. All of these FFL accounts are going to come up. I'm going to go on there. I'm going to follow those pages. I'm going to follow the people that follow those pages. And I'm going to follow the people that that page is following. I know that sounds like a lot, but it works because it's people that are within the company or interested in the company, right? Hold on R real quick, because that was a lot real quick. What was that last line? So just everyone can catch it because that was a nugget of gold. And I want to make sure everybody caught that. Yeah. And I talk really fast. So sorry, guys, Me too. but so, <laughs> I, so accounts, like you just go to Instagram, you're searching someone's account. Let's say you're looking at Nina Damjanovic, whatever. Now you're looking up a company. So you're looking up family first life. You put in family first life. There's a bunch of pages that come up. You want to make sure you follow those pages because those are business pages. They're posting people that work there. They're tagging people that work there, different things. Once you follow those pages, you want to, you want to first and foremost, follow the people that are tagged in the posts. And then you want to follow the people that they follow. So the people that that business page is following. And then you follow, you want to follow the people that are following that page because that's then expanding your reach to people in the industry. So, and there's so many companies that you could do this with you guys. There's what, like over 5,000 insurance companies out there. Make a list, start from A through Z, right? The next thing is going to be um, hashtags. So if you guys hashtag life insurance agent right now, and that's not the only hashtag I use. I use, I use agency owner. I use health insurance agent. I use life insurance agency owner. Like there's so many different ones, but if you hashtag life insurance agent, there's about 170,000 posts on Instagram using the hashtag life insurance agent. There isn't 170,000 people at FFL is there. So that's again, another way for you to reach out to people. And then the third way, and again, you're following these people, you're liking their photos, you're doing all that. And then the third way is going to be places. So what places is, is a geotag location. So let's say like I'm in Hawaii right now and I post a picture on Instagram and I geotag Hawaii. You guys can click on that tag and see who's posted a picture using that tag in Hawaii. Well, if you hashtag or geotag or look up offices under places, so you can look up family first life all these FFL offices are going to come up, right? So now you get to follow agents that work in those offices at FFL. And then you get to see what they're posting about. So like, that's actually looking for new people within the insurance industry. And I don't only do it with insurance. I think insurance agents are amazing, but I also love pest control people. I love people in solar sales. I love people that sell knives because they freaking hustle. They're like door to door. You know what I mean? Like if I, if I'm able to introduce them to this opportunity, then I absolutely will. So, um, when I follow these people, I don't want to just follow them and just like let them sit there. I actually want to engage with them. And the difference between Instagram and like LinkedIn is that on Instagram, I'm not sending someone a message and saying, hey, hey, like 145 plus percent comp, like we're the best in the industry. Like that's so aggressive and people don't like that. Like Instagram is a place that you go on and you connect with people and you make friends and you like their photos and you see them go on a vacation with their sister and post a picture. Like that's what Instagram's about. It's not like a freaking recruiting place where you just go and you know what I mean? So I follow these people. I like their last three photos that they posted just so they could see that I'm engaging with them. And then from there, if they follow me back, great. If not, I really don't care. But if they follow me back, guess what they're going to see? They're going to see that I post 25 stories every single freaking day. They're going to say, dang, this girl works hard. 
dang, this girl, what does she do? She works for some FFL company and it looks like her and her agents are killing it, right? And then that attracts them, brings it back to the, that attraction marketing. But then I'm also like reaching out to people. So like if I see, for example, like Josh Williams, you guys. So like people, like I did not know Josh at our prior company. We come from the same company. I left there and three, four months later, he actually started working there. I didn't know him, had no association with him. But I found him through Instagram hashtags and I added him and I liked his three pictures. And guess what? He followed me back and I posted over and over and over and over again. And I always see who watches my stuff because I'm like, you know, I want to know who's interested in FFL. And so I saw that he was watching my stuff. So I didn't want to just come at him and, and make him mad, right? I wanted to start an easygoing conversation with him. So I just responded to one of his Instagram stories. It was like cologne. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to reach out to this guy. I don't even know what cologne this is, but it looks like it smells great. So Josh, I love that cologne. That's my favorite. <laughs> and he literally responded something simple. And I said, hey, I've noticed you've been uh, keeping up with some of the stuff I've been posting about FFL. Have you ever considered uh, learning more about FFL? And he said, you know what? Not at the moment. Thank you so much. But you're a beast. I see what you're doing. Keep crushing it. And I was like, okay. And that's another thing. You don't want to, like a lot of people are so aggressive in this business, which is great when it comes to selling and right, protecting families because you want to help everyone and you're passionate. So I understand. But like you want to keep on good terms and good relationships with the people that you're recruiting from other companies. Because like, let's say I made Josh really mad and I said, well, no, this company is better. Why would you work there? That company sucks. Like that would leave a bad taste in his mouth about me. He would then block me. And then once he does make the decision to come to FFL, it's not going to be with me. Right. So you want to keep on good terms. Just say, hey, keep crushing it. I see you. I love connecting with like minded people in this industry. Let me know if anything changes from there. That's exactly what I said. Four months later, Josh is in my DMs like, hey, let's get on a Zoom. I've been keeping up with what you're doing because guess why? Because I post 25 days, 25 times a day on my story. So from there, brought him on and obviously he's a beast. So it's just consistency over everything. That's absolute gold. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm actually like kind of baffled there because there's so many layers and like, it's like I'm peeling an onion back. You know, and it's so easy to go on Instagram and just be like, hey, here's the link. Here's this. Watch this four speed, like jam it down their throat. Right. And like you said, like if we do that, we're going to scare them away and they're going to be looking for the person that's a lot less aggressive and people that are crushing it. So keep that up. That's absolute gold. Now, one way too, I'm, I'm hearing you say I add, 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 add. And I see you've got 90,000 followers. And the way that it sounds like you're adding people doesn't sound like you're, you're following counts, keeping the algorithm together. So how is it that you're, you're keeping the numbers low and balanced? Um, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming you're using some sort of reporting app, like you're not following me back, bye, right? Yeah, absolutely. So there's apps, there's like those unfollow apps. So um, following people though, but I do have the unfollow app. So like you can see who doesn't follow you. And guess what? Like those people that don't follow me back, I'll literally unfollow them and then follow them back again. And then like more of their photos so they could see that I'm following them, especially if it's someone that I really want to be in this business. That's a good tip. That's yeah. a really good tip because that's one thing I've struggled. Like there's a few people I'm like, this, this dude would be such a killer. I, I see him crushing it, doing this, this, and this. And why, like, what is my engagement? Why, why isn't he, I, I saw you looked at my story. Why are you following me back, bro? So I just start like pounding the, I'll go deeper in the, in the, the feed, which mm -hmm. is not too far. Don't go past like six, nine months. It's kind of creepy at that point, you know? Exactly. Um, all right, cool. Now, um, on top of that too. So we've got, we've tackled on structure in regards to sorts of travel trips, how to grow your team, how to grow your agency. Now, what about this in regards towards, now we, we understand where we're heading towards this conversation. We've got travel trips, we've got some recruiting. And then on top of that, once you are recruiting and you're building your managers out, What's the best way? Because I've noticed you've got agencies that are just popping like, you know, really, really quick. So is it the, the vision that's been casted towards integrity? What does the conversation look like? Or is it the onboarding process that is really taking your, your brand new teams to from like zero to sales manager, senior sales manager to VP really quick? 
Yeah. You know how Sean always says like move fast and break things. Like that's exactly yeah. like the message when, when onboarding people, like, I think it's very important from day one to explain to people what integrity is, how big first and foremost integrity is, but what the opportunity is with FFL. So like from day one, we're explaining and like, we're getting on the same page as people. Some people just want to come in and they just want to sell. Like, they're like, dude, I don't want to build a business. Like, I just want to set like protect families and that's it, which is totally fine. So like, we know kind of how to work with them. And then there's other people like Josh or like Erica, or, you know, we have this, uh, a new girl, her name's Susanna, and she's literally, a, she doesn't speak English, which is amazing. And she hit senior sales manager her second month in with us. Like she's just rolling and she wants an integrity deal. And we have painted the picture for her. So like, I think it's important from day one, just to paint the picture of what integrity could look like. And one thing Grady Polson always told me like from day one is, Hey, this is like a two year all in like, like you don't go on vacations, you sacrifice a lot. It's a two year grind to literally have the life that you want, right? To get that integrity deal, to get your team integrity deals and get to that next level. So um, our onboarding process is super simple. I think the biggest thing though, is just leading from the front. Like, dude, like, like we've, we're out here, we've, we're protecting families and like, we have agents texting us or managers within our agency texting us saying like, Hey, like, dude, you just lit a fire. Like, I want to get back in the field. You know what I mean? Like, why am I not leading for like, if you guys have your agency and you guys are out there in the field going on travel trips, like why aren't I? And that's the question I always ask myself is like, people fail when they succeed. Like people think they've made it right. They're like, oh yeah, my agency is protecting a thousand families a month. I've made it. I can step out of the field. Well, like don't stop doing what got you to that point, right? So like, it's so important to continue leading from the front because not only A, can you teach agents to do that, but be like your agents are going to respect you more. And they're going to be like, dude, like Jesse, you're really busy. You're managing a team. You're crushing it. Like what's my excuse? So that's huge leading from the front. And we're just very hands-on with everyone, with everyone that works, I should rephrase. So it's like, if someone that's like working really, really, really hard needs help, like we're there to help them. But if someone's like sitting there and complaining, like we set that expectation from the start, like, Hey, if you're going to complain to us, like we don't have time. Like we just don't want to help someone that's going to complain all the time. So, um, I think just laying it out, laying everything out on the table from day one. I love it. So obviously selling at a high volume. Now, when you are selling at a high volume, I mean, I, I can beat this in to the wall 150 times, but the flexibility, you know, maybe talk about the flexibility or, you know, maybe not the excessive shopping that I know you enjoy doing. Uh, <laughs> I remember that from a podcast. <laughs> Andrew's like, Anita, what'd you do this weekend? I went shopping. Don't, don't let me talk about it. Yeah. So we can stay away from that subject, but um, but I mean, the, the flexibility when it comes to your agency and how you can help it grow, you know, because, yeah. you know, I remember when I first got here, I was having a hard time just keeping myself alive. And, you know, what, when, when is kind of the on switch when a brand new agent comes in and it's like, when should I start recruiting? Day one. So for those of you that have been here for nine months and less, if you already have recruited a, your first agent or second agent, you're way ahead of where I was. It took me nine months to recruit my first agent. That was Deidre Sherman. And it's the craziest thing because like, that's when like things really started to take off. Right. So like, I always tell people don't mess up. Like I did. I feel like we'd be way ahead of where we are now. If I had actually started recruiting the way I am now aggressively from day one. Right. So hundred percent do it. And I mean, lead from the front. And again, like what you were saying about like selling and like when your business takes off, it's like, when you sell at a high clip, like you can hire staff, like hiring my first staff. I was one of those people where Grady kept saying, if you're protecting 20 families a month, you need to hire your first staff member. And I'm like, dude, why would I waste that money? Like I could just go shopping instead. Right. Um, so it came to a point where I'm like, where he just kept getting annoyed. He was annoying about it. He's like, Nina, you need staff. You need staff. You need staff. You're not going to use my staff anymore. You need staff. I'm like, okay. So I hired my first staff and it's so funny. Cause like the month that we hired Louise, who's our contracting manager now, like she's like our day one, we literally went from like protecting 200 families a month to 300 to 400. And it was like back to back to back to back. So that's why it's so important to have 
to sell so you're able to hire your staff. And when you hire staff and your like commitment to them is like, hey, this is how much I'm paying you. This is your salary. This is your hourly, however you pay them. Like it forces you to work a thousand times harder because now you're responsible for putting food on their table and paying their bills. So um, it just really forces you to level up. And not only that, like, dude, I remember like not having staff and doing everything. I was in the field and I'd get a text from someone saying, Hey, I want to start FFL. I was putting them into contracting from there. I was doing the onboarding calls and it was just like, I was so scattered and everything was unorganized and like people weren't flowing as they should. So they would come in, not even write a policy and then they'd fall off of planet earth. Right. Where with staff, they just make the process so easy. Like they come in, get set up with contracting during contracting. They're doing the boot camp trainings. They're getting on sales team. From there, they get their agent numbers. We get on a call with them. We do, we love, I don't like doing like group onboarding calls. I like doing one-on-ones. Someone comes in, like, I want them to know like, Hey, I'm here to take care of you. I'm here to help you. We schedule that lead strategy onboarding call. We're on there for like 30 minutes to an hour and we're going through their goals. Cause I feel like the more one-on-one you are with someone, the more they trust you, the more committed they are to you, to their goals first and foremost. So like if Jesse, like you're a new agent, you're coming on a one-on-one with me and you're like, Hey, like my goal is to protect 20 families my first month. I'm going to do everything that I can to help you get there. Right. So, um, just with staff, with selling, like you're just able to do so much more for your business. I love it. I feel like I've gotten a lot um, from this. Um, you know, I have somewhat of a small notebook, but it, it, there's lots of pages of notes here. But I'm, I'm really excited to implement a lot of this information. Guys, like one of the most important things is as you're taking notes, implement it. You learn it, grind it, start testing it today. Jump on Instagram right after this. Like I challenge you guys, you know, if you had a number when you're first starting this out, what would you say? How many people you need to message? Or how many people you need to add and then start in, interacting with per day? I would start start hot. Follow 50 to 100 people every single day. In the, in the industry, in sales in general, go to hashtags, go to accounts, go to places, follow these people. 50 to 100 people every single day. Engage with them. If you follow 100, message or reply to you know, 50 of their stories. If you're following 50 message or reply to 25 of their stories, interact with these people. Because again, like we can't just sit there and expect agents to just come our way. We can't right. expect to build a business if we're just sitting there and not selling, just not doing anything. It's like, you have to actively go out there and hunt for people. Um, can you create an Instagram business? Yes, absolutely. And one of the things I would recommend is doing it now before someone else takes it. Because if someone else sees that that logo is gone, they might go, ooh, I can't get the Instagram page now. Because that's what I did. I'm like, how's primetime not taken? I'm taking it off the market. You're going to have to fight me for this one. Um, <laughs> uh, now, outside from that, um, we've got a lot of stuff here. you know, And I want to be really respectful because it's peak time to potentially doing more work. Or, I mean, shoot, what time is it in Hawaii right now? It's like, t- it's 1030. Oh, the man. The just started. Oh, well, you're, I don't want to get an interfere on some dial time then for you, but you know, outside from that, if you want to just kind of freestyle it and just kind of open up, you know, just some free train thought of some really good things that you would implement, um, you know, either as a brand new agent, a manager that's, you know, kind of juggling between sales manager to VP or VP and pushing to get to like board member, what would you because obviously, like Hayden, this is one of the reasons I absolutely love his his name. Because there's different levels, you know, and mm-hmm. and limit limitless levels or levels getting to limitless. You know, actually, that's really good. Levels to become <laughs> lim- limitless. That's great. <laughs> maybe that's it. a maybe that's a thing that you guys should like brand. But <laughs> <clears throat> but one of the things too on that, you know, maybe maybe take us through a little like freestyle and just kind of go for it. And if you want to leave us with anything that you would um, say has been working really good for you. Let us go for it. So Hayden and I, we were actually on a walk yesterday morning and we were talking about like the last two years with FFL and the last five years for the both of us in insurance in general. 
And we are talking about like how new agents come in and they think they absolutely need to know everything before applying themselves, before getting out in the field or before recruiting on social media. And one of the things I remember so vividly, it was my first day in the field with FFL and I only had Americo and AIG. I didn't have any other carriers. I don't know why. And I, there was like no boot camp training. There was no like YouTube, like there was YouTube channels on FFL, but there really wasn't like, I didn't watch a single video and I had booked appointments already. Cause like Grady just gave me a script and was like, dude, just read the script. So I go in the field or I didn't even go in the field yet. I I'm like, Hayden, I have appointments today. And he's like, great. I'm like, dude, what do I say to these people? He's like, dude, they're requesting insurance. Like just go in there, say you work for FFL. These are all the companies you work with and then ask them the medical questions. I'm like, that's it. So like, I literally just went for it. It was no, like no, nothing, like no training at all. And same thing with like the posting on social media side of things. It was like, you just figure it out and you just freaking do it and commit to yourself of doing it, right? Don't just sit there and feel like you have to know it. If you're a new agent, don't just sit there and think you have to know everything about the products to actually get started. Apply yourself, get on primetime dials, listen to Jesse do it, listen to Sheila Day do it, listen to Will do it. There's so many people doing it, just do exactly what they're doing. Get on, fail forward. The faster you fail, the faster you succeed. And then same with the social media side of things. It's intimidating. It's scary. It's like when, when building a business, like sometimes you, you like take a step back. You're like, dude, can I even do this myself? Like, how do I like teach others to do this? Like get out of your own way and just literally apply what others are doing because it really truly does work. And then um, another thing I want to mention, since you guys are, are on FFL Relentless, like with this business, it's very like raise your hand for your people, for the people that have their cameras on. Have you guys gotten discouraged in this business before? Yeah, a hundred percent. We all have. So it's actually a really funny story. I went to Hawaii with Josh and Alondra in August of 2020. And literally we were in our hotel room or Airbnb or whatever it was. And Josh and literally Josh and Alondra were freaking out. They were at like, they were their agency was doing like 150 families a month, helping 150 families a month. And they were like, so discouraged. They were like, dude, we're not growing. No one's helping us. This sucks, blah, 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 blah. And literally coming off of that trip, literally the next month, they went from protecting 150 families a month to 300 to 600 to 900 to, you know, whatever it is now. And they just blew up. And that was like one of the moments where I was like, Oh my gosh, like, I just remember. And I bring the story up to them all the time. Like they were just so discouraged. They were like, they, they were like almost getting in their own way. And then it just blew up like that. So like, that's the thing. It's like, it's not always going to be easy. Like I said, it's supposed to be hard, but this business is a hundred percent worth it. If you fully apply yourself And there are certain things you're going to have to give up. Like Hayden and I, we love vacations. We love, you know, spending time with our family. We love going to birthday parties. Like at the end of the day, we're 26 years old. Like our friends are literally like partying still. They're going to, I don't know if you guys know what Old Town Scottsdale is, but they literally go Sunday, fun day. And like Thursday through Sunday, they're like living their best life. Like we knew that we had to give those certain things up in order to get to where we wanted to be. So that's all I have for you guys, but just commit to your goals. I absolutely love it. This is probably one of the best like 45 minutes I've had in a long time. And to just think about the bigger picture here and guys like, like Nina has been talking about here, committing to what you want to do and getting after it, break everything in front of you and make a lot of mistakes. And you will be discouraged at times. If you're a brand new agent and you just got here, 120% sure. Like, this is how I felt. When should I start recruiting? Oh my God. Like I just recruited my first agent. I have no idea. What are these questions are asking me? I have no idea. I don't even know what this means. What are they talking about, right? Like how many times have you, I don't know how much you're into certain other markets within the insurance, but I knew when I first got here, I had brand new agents and I didn't know what a lot of annuities were. I didn't know how they worked. I didn't know how this worked. And I was just like, I don't know. I'll, let me figure it out. But this is the best thing is when you start building an agency, it forces you to level up. You can either get slammed in the face, you go, hey, hey, business, bam, it's just going to knock you out. Or you're going to go, hey, I'm not sure, but I'm going to figure this out. Let me either do the research on my own. Let me go and ask some questions so we can learn together. 
And the thing is, guys, like, like Nina, this is you, you, you gain zero monetary value for being here. But this is the thing I absolutely love about FFL. It's a question away. Everybody's so down. Like if you're humble and you've got a good attitude and you work your butt off, it would be stupid for us to not help you. Like, honestly, because you're going to help grow the entire company. And our vision, especially like when you're in Nina's shoes, she's like, I'm like a sneeze away from integrity, or I'm not sure if it's official yet, or if it's, you know, I don't want to, I don't know if there's any, any clause against this, but, um, but like the thing is, is the fact of seeing, and you've been here, what, two years? Yep. Two years, guys. Could you commit two years of your life to no longer ever having to worry about financial issues. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident once you have an integrity deal, like life is obviously a lot more different, but that doesn't mean stop working. And it's like you were saying, when you have success, you stop and you think you're failing, right? And, and it's, it's tough too, because when you're, when you're up at the top of the hill and you're like, well, where'd my friends go? No one's here, what do I do? Do I go back down to their level? No, you just keep rising up and you pull more people there because it is lonely. But as we start to just pour more seeds into everybody and we can all go continue to grow. So Nina, like I really appreciate you dropping some bombs. Um, I, I've got a pretty funny little post I'm about to drop and it's, it's you dropping bombs literally. So uh, it, this is going to be great. But you know, I really appreciate your time. Um, enjoy the the trip here in hawaii congratulations on your success there over 20 families and you got there thursday yes let's insane. go insane that's insane so and Thank you guys for like having me on jesse you guys are seriously on the best team like literally if i was new starting with ffl and i saw the way jesse was leading from the front every freaking day i'd be like sign me up let's go so i appreciate you so <laughs> I, much. I wish i could <laughs> can we go back in time no <laughs> Let's All go. right, Nina, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. All righty, guys. So outside from that, you know, I, I appreciate everybody showing up here. This has been awesome. You know, I feel like I've got a lot of really good knowledge from this. Now it's, it's a matter of let's implement it. You know, who's, I, I encourage you guys. I don't want to say I want to challenge you guys because I don't want to come across like that guy, but I want to encourage you today, send out some, some likes, follow some new people, go through some hashtags, guys. Like um, there's an agent I work with. Her name's Erica. She actually found me through a hashtag guys. She found me through a hashtag and she was like, this company looks shady, 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 shady. Wow. Look at this guy. He looks like he's a real person. She started like going through my stuff, watched the video by herself, emailed me, sent me a message. I called her, got her on her course that she was licensed in four days. Guys, like this is the crazy thing about social media. Are we implementing it or are we watching other people take it from us, right? Because look, like this is a blue ocean, but imagine you recruit someone here that's got 50, 60, 70,000 followers and their engagement is huge. And all they have to do is put one post up of you and your Instagram starts to flood too. And then their marketing starts to come through and then everything can start to follow. Guys, like this world is a blue ocean, but what are we telling ourselves every day we wake up? And when we are getting slammed in the face with adversity, what does that look like? You know, because I, I, can, I can guarantee today, maybe in the last week, the last two weeks, there has been some sort of adversity, right? We're not all living this peachy green, like, you know, sunflower seed life. There are going to be setbacks, but you are in control of how you can think, how you can feel, and how you can move from it. And you guys, like, while we can move fast, break things and, you know, work as hard as we can. Also take a little bit of time for yourself. I don't mean like go and take a full vacation, but when life is getting so overwhelming and it feels like you can't sleep, you can't breathe, the schedule, like dude, force things in your life to bring some health balance, whether it's getting a little sleep, a little bit more sleep, it's going on a walk. It's you're on a, on a day where you get slammed out in the field. Stop on the side of the road, take like 20 deep breaths, look at the sky and just say thankful. I'm thankful for being here today. I'm thankful to, to have the opportunity to serve. Thankful to be worth family first life. I'm thankful and I'm grateful for the agency that I work with. I'm grateful for the people that I'm around. I'm grateful for Sean Mike's vision to be here, guys, because 
if we don't start to take care of our ourself, our spirits, our mind, you know, and like Sheila was saying, when she first got on, I just got back from church and guys like feed your spirit because this will help you on those rough days, those rough patches, find something that's going to help encourage your day, your attitude, your mindset, your flow, your everything guys. Like it, I, I'll be honest with you. Like, I feel like a hypocrite saying this because I've been away from church for a couple of weeks. Cause I've been in Florida back and forth and back and forth. And this is the thing, like today I went and my God, like, I feel like I, I just got rejuvenated. I feel brand new. And make sure you feed yourself. You know, it's kind of like, have you guys ever heard about that strategy when you're on a plane and you know, when they're doing the safety check, make sure you put your safety belts out, you know, wing, 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 here's the exits, right? If we are going down on a plane, right? Whose mask goes on first? Anybody? Your own, right? So guys, like if you don't take care of your, putting your own mask on, meaning your health, feeding your own spirit, teaching yourself, working the hours, leading by example, leading from the front, it's going to be a lot harder to grow a team. It's going to be a lot harder to attract that marketing like she's talking about. And it's going to be a lot harder to have people want to be around you through the cold marketing as well. So take care of yourself. Build your marketing, build your branding, lead from the front, buy your leads, get your leads prepped and ready, get on live dials, okay? Get on live dials if you guys are struggling, you know, whether you're picking an FFL sales team, FFL prime time, um, here soon we're going to be launching, I've, I talked about this last week, but we're going to just be launching one, a new one, so it's more like open broadcast, I'm going to name it bingbongdials.com, because why not, let's get some bing bong going, right? Guys, at the end of the day, we have to have fun with this. We have to have good spirits and, you know, get uncomfortable like Amy Bowers is and get out there on a travel trip. Like her and Pat absolutely crushed it this week. Good job, guys. Like, dude, I want to give some kudos to that. That was freaking amazing. I was hoping to do the same thing being out here in Miami, having four or 500 leads. But like I was mentioning, my Wi-Fi stopped working. All these other complicated technical issues started happening. And I literally could have self-destructed and told myself, every bad thing in the book. You know what I said is everything's going to be good. I can't control this, but I can fix this. If I can fix it, should I worry about it? No. Still couldn't fix it. Should I still worry about it? No. What can I do to fix it? Manually dial. Okay. That's still not working very fast and efficient. Okay. Can I move to a new hotel? Move to a new hotel. Guess what guys? I got to this hotel and it's all working. And I'm thinking like, oh, wow. Should I just stay here? Because I got four or 500 leads. I don't have appointments on Tuesday yet. Why not stay here for a few more days? right? Because we have the flexibility to do that with life. Now, when you work hard, you can play hard. When you work hard, treat yourself. Like Nina was saying, you know, we're, if we don't hit our goal, we're going home. If we don't do this, we're going to do that. If we do it, we'll go have a nice dinner. If we do it, we'll take a little bit of time at the beach and think about marketing yourself at the beach, doing live dials, sitting on the beach with your toes in the sand. Has anybody ever done that? Bowers have. They blew it up last summer in Hawaii. I saw that. I was like, I'm coming to Hawaii. Do you guys have extra leads? Uh, <laughs> um, but guys, if anybody else has any last questions here, like I'm just absolutely fired up after this call. I'm very thankful to be working with you guys. And thank you for everybody that did show up. Uh, hopefully you guys took a lot of notes. And if not, do me a favor, jump on YouTube, FFL primetime. All these calls are going to start getting uh, recorded or they have been for a while. And eventually we're going to be launching something really, really special for everybody that's going to have access to the page. So guys, thank you so much for your time. Happy blessed Sunday. Uh, we will be jumping on live dials here um, for a little bit. I've got to head to an appointment here shortly and then moving forward from there, be on live dials every day this week. So I'm looking forward to working with you guys. I'm looking forward to celebrating some families guys have a blessed day. Make sure you always keep it prime time. See you later.